Hi, I'm Clarice Lin and welcome to my YouTube channel. So today I want to talk about how do you get your blog post onto Google Page 1, especially this year in 2021. So if you are not aware of it already, 75% of this online population uses Google. There is also Bing, Yahoo, Yandex, Baidu. There are many different search engines, but Google is the one that's most often being used. If you write for Google and you know Google's algorithm really well, then that's really going to help you to get more people finding you from Google search, of course. The thing about getting ranked on Google search, if you're not on page one, you are at a great disadvantage. So if you're on page two, page three, I mean, ask yourself, simple question. How many times have you done a Google search and you actually went on to page 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Not many, right? You know exactly why you want your blog post to be on Google, especially if you're running like a small business and you are deciding if you need a blog or not. I can tell you, the answer is yes. In 2021, you still need a blog and a blog can still get you leads. And regardless of what other people might have told you about getting um, blogging being dead, is it still worth your time? Okay, forget about those people. I can tell you, I can assure you, as long as people use Google to look for their answers, people go online to Google, then there is a need for your blog. So your blog is just basically there to provide answers to your potential of your future customers. So if your customers are using Google, good, then you need a blog. So you must be wondering until now, um, what exactly should I do to get my blog post on Google Page 1? First things first is if you have zero blog posts ranking on Page 1, then this is the video you need to watch right to the end. So the thing about getting a blog post rank on Page 1 is it needs to be an A plus blog post. What do I mean by A plus? A plus basically means that you need to be writing this blog article that's so good, so, so, so good, so much better than anyone else has written. And Google knows it, and Google is going to put your blog post on page one. So how is Google going to know it? You know, what are the criteria that Google is looking out for? One of the things that you would need to be looking into before you actually start writing is number one, do your research. Go to Google search, go to look at what other people are writing about, what are the top questions and what are the related questions that they're asking about. Once you have got a list of related questions that forms part of this entire topic altogether, is when you can actually start writing. You have this outline of what you're going to write before you start writing. If possible, what you should also include is your research when you're writing the content. For example, if you are uh, looking at uh, references from other blog posts or other news outlets or looking at research papers, journals, things that you have read through and these are information that helps to support your blog articles, you want to include that in as well because it provides a more comprehensive picture, um, more in-depth and with more evidence that you have added into your blog post. It makes it look more plausible, it makes it look more complete. Another thing to keep in mind is as you're writing, you want to aim for the number of words that you want to get. This is this is a quite an important criteria in a way because Google likes long articles because long articles are good in it being comprehensive, meaning that it covers a lot of different angles. And this is an article that people can easily share and say, here is what you can find the answers, all the answers you have about this particular question is covering everything from A to Z. For articles like this that are long with a lot of information being covered, notice I said a lot of information and not just repetition. So let me just give you a really simple example of what do I mean by writing a blog post that covers from A to Z. Let's say you are running a hair salon and you specialize in um, hair care. You want to write an article about Afro hair care. And when you go onto Google, you type in Afro hair care. And then underneath the search results section that says uh, people also ask. So there are different questions that come out. Like people also ask questions about how do I take care of my Afro hair? How can I treat Afro hair at home? What products are best for Afro hair? Just a simple topic like Afro hair care, you can cover from different angles how people would want to. Um, maintain their hair at home, the different products that they can use, 
and not just kind of having a haircut. It's like uh, trying to visualize or envision different scenarios that people would need if they have Afro hair and how they can care for their hair in different scenarios. So when you put all of this information together and you write out all the details, giving examples, giving specific products, and helping people, giving them different options on what they can choose, what type of products that they can use, and help even maybe helping them to review the different products that you have tried and what product is most suitable for which type of hair and possibly if they have like oily afro hair or like dry afro hair, for example, that's going to be an A plus article because then anyone who has afro hair and want to know everything about how to take care of their hair can just refer to your one article to solve all their questions that they have. And this is what I mean by creating an A plus article. As for my example, you can see that it's covering everything, trying to cover it from different angles, trying to cover the ins and outs, which is, for example, why, how, when, covering the different questions that you can cover in this particular topic. Once you've created this article, most likely this article is likely going to be really long and a good benchmark, and that's what I've mentioned earlier, a good benchmark for that is about, about 1,800, 1,500 to 2,000, 1,800 for some. So depending on your industry, so if there are people who have already written pretty long, let's say for example, your number one competitor, the average length of their top articles on page one is at 1,500. Then when you write your article and you want to outrank them, considering the fact that you have zero blog posts on page one, right then you want to write an article that's probably averaging between 1,800 to 2,000 just to make sure that you're covering something extra that your competitor hasn't done in their blog post. And that's how you can actually outrank them. And then when Google scans your article, looking at your article itself and looking at competitor's article and then say, oh, look, this article is longer and not just longer, that's covering additional information that is not covered by this article, which is already on page one. Look, let's move them to page one. And this is how you do it. Theoretically, that's how it's going to work, provided you are actually adding in extensive details and information and maybe giving examples and case studies that you can include in your article. Once you're done with your article, you've covered every angle, awesome. You go then to Google Search Console if you haven't already set it up. You set that up to actually connect to your website. What happens is you submit your URL onto Google Search Console to tell Google that you have a new blog post on your website and tell, get them to scan and index. Um, another word to describe index is actually to kind of bookmark and store it in the library of resources so they can show your blog post to other Google users when they search for Afro hair care. If your blog doesn't have any, if your blog doesn't have any Google search traffic, what happens is Google doesn't actually scan your website very often. They only scan it once in a while. So if you want your blog post to be quickly known by Google that it's out there, then you would have to submit your URL. Once you get that up and going, that's pretty awesome. You have to probably wait for um for a new blog post and you haven't been on page one, you don't have any other articles which is ranking really well, be a little patient, wait for about a month or so, one to three months ideally to see where is the ranking at, or at least just wait for a couple of weeks. So what you can do is you can go back to Google Search Console, you can see, I'm going to show you like a screenshot over here, over here, and tell you exactly um, how you can actually see if your blog post is doing really well. So if it's doing really well, first, it's probably likely to be appearing on like page two or page three. So if you look at the performance report right here, and you can see exactly for which search query, you can see um, what is the average position for that search query, whether you have a position between the one to eight, which is on page one, of course, or you can see whether it's on position uh, 11 to 20, between 11 to 20, which means you're on page two. So you can actually look at this report to see if you are getting actually any visitors and where your blog post is ranking for for certain keyword search. So this is the report to look at. I would say to verify, to validate that you are actually you actually have an excellent blog post out there and this is how you can get it on page one. For example, like going back to the example I've mentioned earlier about Afro hair care. Once you've written about Afro hair care, maybe you also want to specialize 
let's say for example uh, the best afro hairstyle and what face shape it has so it's kind of like connected what happens is you are writing everything you can write you can be writing about afro hair in this case it actually targets this community and it helps to position your blog to be the number one authority about afro hair care so in this case if someone actually decides to go to google and say and ask for best afro hair care products or afro hair related questions the blog post that you have written is most likely going to appear on page one and this is how you can slowly build up and get your blog post on page one of google it's not something that you can complete in 24 hours regardless of what people think there is no shortcut you can't just produce a blog post and expect it to be after you publish your blog post and you're like okay tomorrow this should be on page one doesn't happen like that it takes time so if there's anyone else who's telling you otherwise you know that they're lying to you focus on getting high quality content and if you want to actually um, read more information about what other tools you can use to help you get your blog post on page one you can check out my very super comprehensive article that I took a long time to write over 5,000 words about how to get your blog posts on page one in 19 months and that, um, that's actually like a case study that I did for one of my clients and help her to get um, multiple blog posts on page one and she's getting found on Google and she's getting international clients so if you're interested to know more check out the pinned comment below where the blog post is and I hope this article is going to help you to get your blog post rank on page one ideally um, position one as well in 2021 you're not going to see immediate results but as long as you're willing to put in the hard work to research to really cover all angles on writing a blog post making sure your blog post is better than what's found on page one then you're going to get there to page one it's just a matter of time and diligence I hope you enjoyed this video and found it really useful. So if you have any questions about getting a blog post on page one, let me know in the comments below. And if you're looking for more videos to learn how you can get your blog post onto Google search results page one and how to get rank on page one of YouTube search as well, do hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. See you.